Not only is it possible and necessary, and it's you to live your dream, to make this, this greatness that you have within you become a reality, but what I've come to appreciate when you're working on changing your life, changing some bad habit, getting out of addictive situations or relationships, or working to build a dream or making a difference in our society, or learning something that's very challenging. Here's what I, I realized, ladies and gentlemen, and develop a great deal of respect for. It's hard. Easy is not an option. It's hard living. Life is hard. See, it's hard when when you are 49 years old, been working on a job for 17 years, and they come in and tell you you're finished and give you one week severance pay. And you got to start all over again. It's hard when you are married and raising children and your children are crawling and your husband dies unexpectedly. It's hard handling just the tragedies of life. It's hard when you're working on something and, and you put everything you have in it and it doesn't work out, you lose your money and other people's money. It's hard. It was rough when I lost my job and I could not find a job. It was humiliating and embarrassing, borrowing money, and then I couldn't pay the money back when I told them I would. That's rough. How people look at you, how they respond to you. It's very hard. It's humiliating. Here's what I discovered that happens to you in life, that you will go through things and while you're going through them you can't understand why it's happening to you but after you go through it you get back and you look at it and you say oh now i understand why i needed that lesson i couldn't understand it then but after i got through it then i saw that that was preparing me for bigger and better things Now, what do you, how do you hang in there during the hard, difficult times? Les, you must have faith. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to believe in your abilities. You've got to believe in your service, your company, your ideas, unquestionably. You've got to have faith, and that faith gives you patience. That is not going to happen as quickly as you want it to happen. A lot of things are going to happen that will catch you off guard. And so therefore you've got to deal with and handle it as it comes. And not only that, but that faith and patience drives you into action. You've got to keep moving and keep plugging away. I can see people coming out talking to a guy out there watering and fertilizing the ground that's not showing anything. Hey, what you doing? Well, that's how people are going to do you. So how long have you been working on this? How long have you been working on your dreams? And you have nothing to show. This is all you got to show. People are going to do that to you. And some people, ladies and gentlemen, they stop. Because they don't see instant results. It doesn't happen quickly. They stop. Oh, no, 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 no. You got to keep on watering your dream. And when it began to happen, they stop laughing. They said, look. Whoa, look, look here. It's, look up. Hey, man, you know, I know you could do it. Look, you got a job here? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, during those hard times, we didn't know how you're going to make payroll during those times when you fail and, and, and things didn't work out. They were, they were nowhere to be found. But know what I discovered? When you're working at your dream, somebody said, the harder the battle, the sweeter the victory. Oh, it's sweet to you. It's good to you. Why? See, when, you, when it's hard and there's a struggle, see, what you become in the process is more important than the dream. That's far more important. The kind of person you become, the character that you build, the courage that you develop, the faith that you're manifesting. Oh, it's, it's, it's something that you get up in the morning, you look yourself in the mirror, you're a different kind of person. You walk with a different kind of spirit. And people know that you know what life is, that you have embraced life. You knew it was hard, but you did it hard. 
Now it takes us to the next level. If it's hard, why do people do it? You ask people who do things. Why do they go? People who climb mountains just for the sake of it. Nobody paying to do it. Just do it. Somebody said, I'm going to run around the world. He said, well, why would somebody want to do that? I'm going to swim the Atlantic Channel. Why? Why do people do that? I, I wondered, why, why would a Nelson Mandela give up 26 years of his life? Why do people do that? Here's what I discovered in high school. In high school, I decided I wanted to go out for football. Never forget this. And I discovered why people do things. You know why, ladies and gentlemen? Even though it's hard, it's worth it. It's worth it. I was up there in the booth, called good games too, because the pain wasn't worth it to me. And I'm saying to you, you know why people do what they do? The people who go after their stuff, what makes it worth it? It's got to be your passion. You got to love it, ladies and gentlemen. You got to love it. It's got to be what you are supposed to do. You want to sing, and even though they want to invite you to Carnegie Hall, you're going to sing to anybody that listen to you, including singing to yourself. I used to talk to my plants when nobody else would listen to me. You got to write even if no one published your book, write because that was given to you to do. You do what it is you're supposed to. You're supposed to build something. You're supposed to create something. I don't know how to do it. Learn. Do whatever is required. Just go out there. It's possible you can get what you want. It's necessary. If you want it, you got to go into action. You got to be willing to experiment. You got to be willing to fail and to succeed. You got to be willing to form and to develop new relationships. It's you, it's on you. You got to make that happen. Nobody's going to bring it to you on a silver platter and say, here's your dream manifested. No, it's hard. Yes, it's hard. It's difficult. Yes, right. And it's worth it. So peer pressure didn't just start in the 90s or the 80s. It's difficult. It is challenging for kids right now. And it's going to be taken. Um, some easy, simple methods to help bring them out of this madness, this insanity? No. Is it hard? Yes. Let's look at what we've been doing. What has worked? What has not worked? Let's look at where we want to go. What is it that we want to produce? What is it that we want to create for our young people? And as we think about that, start experimenting with different methods and techniques to create and to produce that. And begin to believe that it's possible through our commitment, through our vision, through our determination, our relentlessness, because of our belief, it's possible. Do you have a story? Have you overcome some stuff? Have you made some mistakes? Have you gone through a divorce? Have you had some setbacks, some failures? And you got through it, you survived? It's a pressing public need. How you got through that becomes a survival guide for people that's struggling with that right now. That's, that's what it is. Your story is powerful. That's why Steve Jobs said the storyteller is the most powerful person in the world. And so you, the key to today, making it today, with all the uncertainty, what's major is to have your mind focused. That it's possible looking at what kind of world are they going to be in? As we look at the global economy, that as we begin to use our collective will and genius and resources, it's possible that we can create an educational system that not only will test their minds with, with information and facts and figures, but would teach them how to think and be creative. And what does it mean to be a human being and to value human life? And how do you make relationships work? How do you bounce back from adversity? It's possible that we can give them a curriculum that will give their lives a sense of purpose and direction and meaning and teach them how to begin to know and operate on a higher level of being where they become assets to our society rather than liabilities. What if we leave here with that kind of consciousness that it's possible as opposed to saying we have to write this generation off, that it's possible that we were born for such a time as this and that, that maybe Someone here has the idea or the method or some plan of action or an approach that can resolve many of the problems that we're facing with young people today. Whatever we have to do to save our children, it's worth it.